Hey, Chad the Intern here for Paragon Comics with our final absolute Batman Battle for the Cal recap. But in fact, this video might just replace all the other ones that uh, we've done. And just to be clear, this isn't like a super in-depth review, although it's, I am going to definitely critique and uh, praise some of these comics. Um, so it's, it's just meant to be a real quick you know, oversight. You want like something really detailed. Uh, it's hard to do that with all these comics in you know one video or two videos or whatever. Anyways, um, we're gonna start before we get to the battle for the cow. We gotta recap Batman R.I.P. Now, you saw Don and I uh, reviewed this book back in February. Um, you know, technically, uh, this storyline is comprised more than just the run of Batman six seventy six to six eighty one. But the hardcover that Don and I reviewed back in uh, February only reprinted those books. There was also the Heart of Hush uh, story that ran through De Detective Comics, which I felt was vastly superior. Uh, that storyline also crossed over with Nightwing, Robin, The Outsiders. And then uh, all those books incorporated the uh, Last Rites crossover. None of them really stood out to me as being anything above average. And they used this story as an excuse to cancel a bunch of uh, the Batman-related comics. Uh, Robin, Nightwing, Birds of Prey, and they uh, they canceled Catwoman a few months before that. Uh, they're going to be rebooting some of these series soon, so hopefully we'll get back to normal eventually. Um, anyways, uh, Batman R.I.P. itself was not a good story at all. Uh, just way too confusing, and you had to have read a lot of comics that took place upwards of a few years before it to understand what was going on here. Don and I just really dislike Grant Morrison as a writer of superhero comics. He's great for those Vertigo books, but why DC lets him go hog wild on their mainline tights and fights comics, I don't understand. So I give this book a C minus. And just another preface here is that I have not read Final Crisis because I cannot keep track of all these different uh, crossover, you know, DC uh, continuity books. So I and I haven't read them. So if, if it doesn't sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, that's because I haven't read that. And now we're going to talk about uh, whatever happened to the Cape Crusader. And I already reviewed this in a separate video or recapped it or whatever. I just want to talk about it really quickly here. Um, as much damage as Grant Morrison did to Batman and his family of comics, Neil Gaiman was almost able to make up for it with this two-part story. Even though it's fairly short, the story was really informative and a great character study of Batman's rogues gallery. Plus there was this whole alternative history to the character, which I feel was not supposed to be in regular continuity. The ending is really confusing though. It has that Grant Morrison sense of arbitrary surrealism to it even though Neil Gaiman wrote it. Uh, still, it's really breezy and fun to read and so I highly recommend uh, these two books, uh, Batman 686 and Detective 853. And uh, I think there's a, there's a trade coming out soon uh, that will reprint them. So uh, definitely check these out or pick up that trade. I, I give this story an A-. minus. Okay, next up we got the actual Battle for the Cowl miniseries. It was a three-parter. Um, I like this one. Um, this was the core of the series of the entire Battle for the Cowl collection of books. Uh, you know, there's plenty of books that have the Battle for the Cowl logo, but they, this is the core miniseries. Uh, it deals with Tim Drake and Dick Grayson uh, all hell is broken loose in Gotham. The Black Mask, not to be confused with the Black Glove, uh, has started a war between the Penguin and Two-Face. And then there's a mystery Batman who's going around killing people that uh, Nightwing has to stop him. It's a pretty fun book with a lot of action, like a Michael Bay movie. Not exactly a super smart story, but definitely entertaining. It was interesting to see uh, Tony Daniel as both a writer and artist this time. I'm really anxious to see where the overall Batman continuity will go from here because this seems to be the story that ties it all together. I give this a B plus. All right, next up we got the Oracle miniseries, Oracle, The Cure. Uh, this definitely follows the Birds of Prey book, the story does, which I wasn't reading Birds of Prey, so I was a little confused on this one. You know, and of all the miniseries and one shots from this whole Battle for the Cal crossover, this Oracle series seems to have the least connection to the main story. And I didn't read Birds of Prey and I didn't read Final Crisis, so going into the story I was kind of lost. 
Uh, it's very obvious that the story picks up where another one left off, which wouldn't be so bad if the story itself made sense. This thing is just all over the place trying to be a total Matrix ripoff where the internet and a virtual reality world coexist with the real world. And there's something about crystals and a mathematical formula called anti-life, but it's not perfected so people die because of it. And I don't know, this story is just a mess. They're clearly trying to show that Oracle can be an ass kicker herself. And there's some scenes demonstrating this, but I just didn't buy it. It was a convoluted, disjointed, trite story that was only mildly entertaining, so I give uh, Oracle the Cure a C. All right, next up we got the Asriel Death's Dark Knight miniseries. Again, it's another three-parter. Um, I just don't know what DC is doing bringing back the Asriel character. I always found him to be really annoying because he's a pseudo-holy warrior, eye for an eye kind of vigilante. He's the Punisher, except he works for God, or at least he thinks he does. Anyways, this latest miniseries is a really contrived story, just like the Oracle one. It deals with a character from the Grant Morrison run on Batman. Uh, he's a Gotham cop named Michael Lane, who was part of a secret program of guys that were trying to replace Batman if he ever died. Somehow he comes to the attention of the Order of St. Dumas, and they want him to take up the Asriel role. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of convincing that has to happen. And in the process, there's also a lot of action. I just found it to be a really trite and predictable uh, story, which is weird because there's plot holes galore. Uh, if someone could explain to me how at the end of one issue, a character is impaled with a sword, and the beginning of the next issue, they're fine, and that's not a continuity error, I'd love to hear it. But overall, the series is basically just a teaser of maybe a test, or maybe a test run for a new ongoing Asriel series. Uh, the art was kind of cool because it seemed to be watercolored or use something other than just pencil and ink. Uh, the problem was the colors were very monochrome and it, at times it just looked a little cartoony. The dialogue was also lame with lots of one-liners and bad jokes. Uh, you know, I'm going to kick your ass. Lots of puns too. Ugh. Uh, not a bad series, but there just isn't much to appreciate here. So I, I also give uh, the Asriel miniseries a C.